Hi, so we're playing Test Out New Angles this week. Currently you can see a bit of a mess of a bookshelf back here and you're looking right down on me because the kitten moved my tripod and it's being a pain. So we're trying to figure out somewhere where I can sit close to you and be well framed in the shot has been difficult. But this might work. Tell me what you think of this. Is this too much of a downward aspect? Um, also, the kitten's going a bit nuts down there, so... Um, also, do you love my new Duna? You've got a bit of a glare coming off here, so you might be able to see it super well, but it's very flowery and gorgeous, and I'm very happy about it. Anyway, all that stuff aside, why am I rambling? Today we are doing my October wrap-up. So, right at the start of October, I was in Montreal for work and so I was reading really well there because I was in a hotel by myself and if I'm bored like by myself nothing to no one to talk to kitten leave it alone reading becomes the thing I'm most likely to do so I did do a lot of reading while I was in Montreal and then I came home and then I somehow had like the best reading month I've had almost all year only one month surpassed this and I was not working that month I was like commitment free um so that was like in january so i read 23 things that's right 23 things this is ridiculous um a lot of these were manga short stories audiobooks a huge range so let's get started plus you see this collection beside me which we're gonna go through right now so the first book i read this month was vengeful by v.e schwab this is the secret to vicious um, and this series is a super villain, superhero kind of story. Uh, and it follows our main characters, Victor and Eli. Um, and in the first book, uh, it is Eli's college project, I guess, his college thesis, to discover how extraordinaries or EOs are made and they figure it out and become ones. And that's the plot of the first book. So I won't spoil it all the second book. But this, it's been a long time between the two and there was not meant to be a sequel originally. But this is amazing. I read this. I picked this up in Montreal. This is the Indigo exclusive edition. Signed. Um, where's the signature? There it is. Um, and I read it straight away when I bought it and I loved it. It was amazing. It was so good five stars. Then I read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is Hank Green's debut novel. Obviously he's the brother of John Green if you were living under a rock. Um, and this is a sci-fi urban story, speculative fiction kind of thing. Um, following our main character April who, oh April May because that's her name and it's kind of a joke obviously. Um, April May discovers this giant robot in the center of New York that's just not moving and her and her friends film a little video starring April about it thinking it's an art piece but it turns out these have popped up all over the world and she goes viral and this is an exploration of fame and um what it means to be human and oh it's I enjoyed this as well I read this in one sitting on the plane home um it was great i loved it so much um i definitely would read more hank green in the future but this is definitely an adult novel if you're going into it thinking it would be like a john green young adult it's an adult the next thing i read this month was um the dreadful tale of prosper reading i also read this on the flight home this was mostly on planes and i bought i bought this in an airport because i ran out of books to read and couldn't access my luggage while the rest of my books were that i'd bought on my trip and I read the, most of this on the flight home and then in an airport waiting to get home because I spent quite a few hours in an airport. Um, so this was another flight book. That, so I read most of it in one sitting. And this follows our main character, Prosper, whose great, great, great grandfather made a deal with the devil um, and or a devil, a demon, and this demon's now seeking revenge. This story is middle grade, but absolutely gorgeous. The sequel comes out very soon, I believe. I'm very excited to read it. 
This is just so spooky and cute. I should have said, I have a vague theme this month, which is somehow spooky. <laughs> They're not all the spookiest books. Some of them are pretty spooky, but they were all somehow a little bit spooky, um, which is obvious for October. So this definitely tied into that. I really enjoyed it. And the demon living in his head is the most hilarious thing. I'm so excited for book two. Then I read Tokyo Ghoul volume one. This is a manga that follows um, our main character who finds out, so ghouls exist in their world and they're these like human eating beasts that look like humans but will eat humans. Um, and he is in a fight with one who was trying to pick him up and eat him, like pick him up as in like a lady and eat him. Um, and she gets hit on the head by a falling piece of uh, like construction equipment and dies. But, and he's missing, like he's had some organ damage. So at the hospital, they transplant her organs into him, the ones he's missing and to save him. And now he's like half ghoul half human so he's doing a lot of morality of the thing and I really enjoyed this um from memory I gave it four stars it was just really fun <laughs> the plot was really funny and I liked it a lot <laughs> then on audiobook I listened to City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare this is the sixth book in the Model Instrument series and the final one in that little part of the Shadowhunters world um, this is part of my reread, which I've been doing for the past couple of months. Um, and I also read it as part of the readathon, which was also the last couple of books as well. Tokyo Ghoul was part of that? No. No, it wasn't. This is the first one that's part of a readathon I did, which you can check out the vlog I did on my channel. It's around. I'll try and remember to link it down below or in a card if I figure out how to do those. Um, I enjoyed this. I hadn't reread City of Heavenly Fire before. Um, it's obviously a reread for me, but I hadn't reread it before and I wasn't remembering that much from it. I enjoyed it, but there were certain times that I felt were really slow. Like I would be walking down the street of Montreal when I was listening to it and, and like black out. Like I just forgot what was being said at me I wasn't paying attention or I'd be on the flight and fall asleep listening to it and couldn't figure out where I was like that doesn't normally happen to me so I think there's parts of this that are really slow but overall the plot is really good so I think I kept it at like a four stars which is what I rated it last time I think um but I'm very excited to continue with the Shadowhunter world for my reread then I read another five star book this month. I did have quite a few from what I'm looking at books that I really, really liked. So um, I also read this one and gave it five stars, which is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which I love um, if you didn't know. And this came out this month and I devoured it in a handful of sittings. I really liked that the so, so the basic premise of this series is we follow Laszlo, who is um, a librarian, and when he was a kid, he actively remembers the name of this town being taken away, like wiped from everyone's memory. And he's so obsessed with the mystery of this city that he really wants to figure out what's going on. And then we also follow Sarai, who is um, a god or daughter of a god and is dealing with a lot of morality, racial tensions, war, generational trauma problems. Oh, it's so complex, but I love it so much. The series kind of ties into, this duology, sorry, ties into Lady Taylor's other series a bit, kind of like they exist in the same universe. And I have a feeling from the ending of this, she will definitely be doing more things in this universe and I'm really excited to see where she goes. So this was amazing, five stars. Then I read Kimi Ni to Doke From Me to You volume one, uh, which is another manga and oh, I didn't really like this. This follows a girl who 
looks like a character from a horror movie to me she looks like the girl from the ring but it was actually a japanese horror movie in the book that i'm not familiar with um so like long lank black hair that often covers her face so all her classmates think she's really scary um and it's just a little romance between her and a co uh, and a classmate um i thought this was a little bit too cutesy i'm starting to get the feeling that cute, con cute contemporary manga is not my thing. Um, I also found it hard to keep track of who was saying what, like what characters were talking when. Um, and when a lot of it is dialogue driven, that's really a problem. Um, so I think I gave this three stars. It wasn't bad, probably like a 2.75. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Then another manga I read this month was Blue Exorcist volume one. Um, and this, I absolutely adore. Adored. This follows um, a main character who is the son of the devil, um, and but he's grown up in like a, a convent of demon hunters. It is so good. Like he's a little exorcist family. Oh, and the little he just was great. I loved the characters. I loved the plot. Um, and it was way way easier to follow the art style and the dialogue than the other mangas I've been reading. So I loved this. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. It was so good. I'm definitely going to be continuing the Blue Exorcist series. Then I listened to the audiobook for Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a very dark, um, contemporary following our main character Sadie whose little sister has been murdered and she knows who the killer is so she's gone to find him and kill him um, but we also follow a podcast that's uh, looking into the mystery of these girls because since Sadie's plotline she's also gone missing and the podcast is trying to find her so it kind of follows these two threads. The audiobook was amazing, and that's primarily because the podcast section is done in a full cast. Actually, the whole thing's full cast, I think. Um, which really brings all the characters Sadie meets to life, and it also makes the podcast section feel like a real podcast. It was so immersive. It reminded me a lot of Serial, because that's the main crime podcast I've listened to. I really got that vibe and it was just so good like amazing oh though definitely trigger warnings for um, sexual assault pedophilia um, lots of dark stuff is happening but it's so touching and so amazing so spoiler alert if you're paying attention to the background the next book I read this month was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. So this is my second Victoria Schwab book for the month. This is middle grade and follows a main character Cassandra who can see ghosts. Cass, yes. Um, and her best friend is a ghost and she's going, her parents are ghost hunters that have their own TV show. They've just got their own TV show. So they're traveling to Edinburgh to find ghosts and she's being dragged along with them except she can actually see the ghosts so things are gonna so things are gonna go down i really enjoyed this i thought it was very fun um i think i gave it about a four stars um just because there were some bits that were a little bit simple but i would definitely read more in this series but it was a very good middle grade i would totally recommend it to middle grade aged readers in my life and it was great fun then I read Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rossner. I'd actually been reading this while I was in Montreal, but I was um, a bit far through when I got on the plane to get home. And then, um, so I didn't want to have it in my carry-on, wasting like luggage space in my carry-on for my weight limits. So I instead um, went ahead and switched it in, uh, switched out and read some other things. And then I ended up picking this up again after I'd gotten through my readathon reads. So this kind of took a while, but I was reading other things in the meantime. So this had been in the works for a while. Um, this is a, a retelling of the Goblin Market following our two main characters, um, uh, La La Lana, yeah. 
Leia, Leia and Libba. And they're Jewish girls in this uh, little village in somewhere like Poland or something like that. Um, and maybe the Ukraine. And it's dealing with a lot of um, Jewish culture and things. And our two sisters, one of them can turn into a swan and one of them can turn into a bear. And it's kind of following this family dynamic between the two of them, what it means for them to be Jewish and falling in love and, and all within this mystical setting. And um, Libba's story is told in uh, prose and Liar's story, like Liar's half of the narrative is told in verse. I really enjoyed the plot of this, but there was, the writing didn't quite sit well with me. I thought it was a little bit simplistic. And at times, you seem to be following the same events too many times because you follow it with Libba and then again with Liar to get their two points of view. And then also some other times it felt like plot points were happening just for the girls to not act upon them. Like something would happen, they'd go, oh my god, let's do something about that and then end up right back where they started. Like there was quite a few times where I felt like nothing was progressing anywhere. Um, so yeah, there were some writing issues, I thought, but the plot overall was really good um, and interesting and the family dynamic and things were really great to explore. So I liked this, but it didn't hit all the boxes for me. So I gave this like three and a half, three point seven five stars. Then I read The Land I Lost by Cassandra Clare and I'm going to guess Sarah Reese Brennan, which is the second last book in the... Ghost of the Shadow Market series. This one followed uh, Alec and um, Magnus kind of as Alec goes on a mission to somewhere in South America to resolve some problems. I can't remember exactly where it was, but he, they get a new kid and it was cute and adorable. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was probably the longest of these short stories in this collection, um, but I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars. I enjoy reading from Alex's perspective though, so it worked really well. I also read another little short novella and that is The Lost Sisters by Holly Black. This is um, a bridging novella between um, The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. And this follows, uh, this is like a letter from Taryn's perspective talking to Jude about why the plot of The Cruel Prince happened. Um, I enjoyed it, but I don't know how much it added to the plot. I think it just gave a good perspective from Taryn. Um, but otherwise it was just rehashing events. Um, I, yeah, I gave it three stars. It was fine. I also read one story from Tales of the Peculiar this month, which was the new story in this edition, which I picked up for free when I bought The Map of Days. Um, this story was The Man Who Bottled the Sun, and I thought it was really creepy and I enjoyed it. Again, tied into the creepy theme. <laughs> then I finally finished A Thousand Endings, A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, which is edited by Ellen O oh and Elsie Chapman. And this is a, an Asian inspired, mythology inspired anthology that had a lot of ologies, sorry. Um, and it was a bunch of stories from a bunch of Asian authors uh, reimagining Asian fairy tales from various different parts of Asia following their own heritages. And this was amazing. I really enjoyed it. I thought lots of the stories were beautiful. There were some I didn't like, but lots that I did. And I thought it was just a really strong anthology. Then I listened to Deathless on audiobook by Catherine M. Valenti. This is a standalone, though I have a feeling there's gonna be a second one now because Goodreads implied it had more than one. Um, story that's Russian inspired, mythology inspired, a lot of magical realism, lyricism, urban fantasy. It's really hard to explain, but it essentially follows our main character, Maria Marevna, who kind of ends up entangled with Crochet the Deathless. And it's beautiful, but very complicated and very weird. I think you have to be the right person to like this. I enjoyed it. I gave it like a four and a half stars. Um, only because there were some pacing issues for me. The plot traveled in a very strange way. It's written very strangely. 
I don't know how else to describe it, but I thought it was good. Like I enjoyed it at the same time, so I gave it like four and a half stars. <laughs> then I wrote, finished another audiobook, which is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. And this is a witchy, uh, necromancy, feminist book. Uh, essentially it follows the main character Mila who um, always thought she was just like a witch for sure. Like they, her and her best friend fiddled around with spells and things but nothing that she ever really was confident worked. Um, and then her friend dies and everyone's blame, everyone in the town is blaming it on suicide because two cheerleaders I think just committed suicide in a suicide pact so they think she's like the third in a run of suicides but Mila is convinced that she didn't kill herself and so she does some magic to bring her friend back from the dead and accidentally brings back the cheerleaders as well and they're all on a hunt to solve the murder. Oh I really enjoyed this I thought it was hilarious it was so funny perfect for the spoopy season um the humour was great, the plot twist was good, oh, it was just so much fun. The audiobook was also really good. It was narrated uh, by... What's her name? <laughs> it was narrated by Rebecca Soler, who narrates a bunch of things. I really like her, she's really good. Um, and I definitely recommend this. I also read this month And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness and illustrated by Ravina Kai. This is an illustrated retelling of Moby Dick from the point of view of the whale. Um, I read this pretty quickly because it's illustrated and short and I liked it. But um, I think I would benefit more from it if I knew Moby Dick. Like was had actually read Moby Dick rather than just being kind of familiar with the plot. Um, though I thought it had a really good message and was enjoyable to read. So it's a good one. I think I gave it about three stars. Three and a half maybe. Then I read Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a standalone horror, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna call it a horror. This follows three main characters. Um, uh, what are their names? Marion, Zoe, and Val. And Marion has just moved to this island and she, um, her father recently died and she's looking after her sister and her mother we're not coping very well and then weird stuff starts happening to her and we also follow Zoe who's lived on the town for, in the on the island for a while and her dad is their police sheriff and her best friend went missing mysteriously in a string of disappearances of girls over the last like 50 years on this island and then we follow Val who is uh, kind of possessed, kind of her soul was sold to this devil character when she, before she was born and you know that from the very start and she's kind of the catalyst for a lot of things happening in the town. This has some sapphic romance, um, it's uh, some asexual representation and also just a really fun horror. It's really good. Um, I did have a few problems with pacing, only, I, only that I found it hard to read large swathes of it at a time. Like I kept wanting, to, I had a hard time keeping engaged. Um, but everything that did happen I really enjoyed. It was very paradoxical, it was weird. I just was putting it down lots. I couldn't keep engaged. Um, but by the end, I really liked it and I would definitely recommend this. Then I read probably another one of my favourite books this month and another 100% 5 stars. That is Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. This is a young adult uh, magical realism fantasy following this town called Three Graces where every seven years uh, they offer up the town's best boy as sacrifice to the forest because years and years ago a witch made a deal with the devil and to keep have all this prosperity in their town like no one really gets sick or dies from unfortunate circumstances everyone just grows old and dies and there's always prosperity and enough rain and just the right amount of food and everything and to maintain that they have to give up their best boys um, 
And so this, at the point of the story's happening, um, the last best boy escaped and they do have the chance to escape. They go into this forest and they'll either never come out or they come out but they're changed. They don't come out very often. And so, but the last best boy, he came back out missing a hand and then when normally all the other best boys that, that survive had left the town because they couldn't cope living in this forest, he stayed. And that was kind of the first time that it happened. It was very strange. And then all of a sudden, three years early, the sign that a new best boy must be surrendered up to the forest happens again. And they've got to figure out what to do, how to keep this um, blessing on their town going and this pact with the devil and what they're going to do about it. And we follow our three main characters in a polyamorous triad. I love them to pieces. There's Mewen, who's the daughter of the Grace Witch, so the current Grace Witch, so directly descendant from the witches that made the pact with the devil. And then we have Rune, who is going to be the current best boy. Everyone in the town knows it. And then we also follow Arthur, who um, for the first seven years of his life was raised as a girl, so his mother wouldn't let him be the best boy. She pretended he was a girl for the first seven years of his life and then he goes skinny dipping with some girls down at the lake and they realize he's not a girl and he's now aggressively trying to prove he could be best boy. His kind of relationship with best being best boy and his gender and everything is a kind of issue that's explored in here. So this explores polyamory, um, gender experiences, um, and how gender as a construct functions and all in this beautiful lyrical magical setting um, I loved this I mean I'm probably a little biased being in a polyamory triangle of sorts but this just oh mm, it was so good I shipped the these kids to the high heavens I loved them and I loved their plight and everything felt really powerful and meaningful I love Tessa Grattan I'm gonna keep reading Tessa Grattan till the end of my days then I managed to finish another audiobook this month and this was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White this is a Frankenstein retelling which kind of I believe sticks pretty true to the original but we're following kind of the bride of Frankenstein, his wife, um, before they get married and they were kids growing up and it's her kind of um, figuring out where she fits into his world and it's very dark and gritty and uh To me the writing was sometimes a little simplistic um, and the plot didn't always have the best pacing but Elizabeth I loved as a character and the ending I really enjoyed so I think this is like a four star 3.75 for me I really enjoyed it I enjoy Kirsten White generally but it wasn't the best thing I've ever read I also read Toil and Trouble which was edited by Jessica Spotswood and Tess Sharp this is an anthology of witchy stories again can you tell my spoopy theme was going strong this month um this is another anthology that I loved most of them, but there are a few I really didn't like. Um, I think I gave this one a solid four and a half stars because most of them were amazing. Um, my favorites were probably, let me have a look at the thing. I really liked The Garen Girls by Emery Lord. I really liked Love Spell by Anna Marie McLemore. I really liked Daughters of Baba Yaga by Brenda Yovanoff. Um, and the rest of these I read so long ago I can't remember. Great! <laughs> I can't remember the details of what I felt about any of them. I think I liked Brandy Colbert's one too. I liked most of them, but there were some I liked a lot more than others. Um, this was, yeah, really good. I have a weird relationship with anthologies, but I'm going to do a full video on that at some point, probably in the new year. And then the final thing that I read in the last hours of October is Snot Girl Volume 2 California Screaming by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. I don't know what to think about this series. 
I know it's a bit strange this is the second volume and I enjoyed the first one but I found it really weird and again I kind of feel the same I enjoyed it but it was pretty weird I also don't know how much actually happened in this I'm not sure um, it was good and I like the art style but the plot is strange and I just don't quite understand I was hoping this one would explain things to me a bit more but it didn't so I will probably keep going with these only because I'm kind of on publishing like I've read each of them as they came out so I'm not trying to catch up but it was weird yeah so that ended the month this is also a bit spoopy because this kind of follows a main character Lottie or snotty as they like to call her who is a fashion vlogger vlogger no I think she's just a blogger but she's like a like a influencer and she has allergies and that like rules her whole life to the point that she makes crazy decisions and there's murders and weird stuff going on it's weird I don't understand <laughs> So those are all the books I read in the month of October. It was insane. It was an amazing reading month. I don't know how I did it. Uh, that's definitely not going to follow through to November because I'm reading a bunch of huge books in November. If I read like five books, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video. And yeah. Goodbye.